Good afternoon, Firebirds, and welcome to the fourth webinar in the Career Readiness Webinar Series, Transitioning from a Backpack to a Briefcase. I am so excited about today's conversation as we prepare you for UDC's upcoming jobs and internship virtual fair. You'll hear all about that exciting event momentarily. Today, we'll be discussing navigating career fairs. And I'm just so excited about today's conversation because it's the last webinar series, it's the last webinar in the series. Um, we've delivered for the past four weeks a conversation to prepare Firebirds, not only to find internships, find opportunities, connections, find employment in this unprecedented times, but the tools that you received today and in these past four weeks you can utilize this conversation moving forward. We started the series with an, uh, a conversation on the Handshake portal. We had an introduction and a walkthrough of uh, Handshake. Next, we had a conversation on building your resume. Wonderful conversation that also we talked about the cover letter, the importance of a cover letter and all that hiring managers hiring managers, what they look for, you know, when they're looking at your cover letter. Last week, we discussed building your LinkedIn profile, and we were just um, overwhelmed, overjoyed to have with us the Vice President for Advancement for the Office of Advancement, Rodney Trapp. He shared with us his experience using LinkedIn, and he also showed us how he used LinkedIn to rebrand himself once he graduated from graduate school. That was a great conversation. Mr. Trapp stepped out of the workforce, re-entered the workforce, and he used LinkedIn to do that. Every conversation has been recorded and it will be available on UDC's website. If I have your email address, you will get the replay links. It will be posted again on UDC's website. I'm gonna share it with my colleagues, my awesome colleagues at the Office of Career Services who has partnered with me you know, on this uh, webinar series. So without any further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to my colleagues of UDC's Office of Career Services. Let me unmute. There we go. Thank you, Ms. Palmer, and thank you for the opportunity. We welcome you. We're super excited. People as excited as you for this um, partnership and just being a part of this uh, alumni series. So today, um, me and my team member, Mr. Niles, we will be talking about navigating the virtual career fair. So let me start sharing my screen. So here we are, uh, the final part of the webinar alumni career readiness webinar series. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be discussing navigating the career fairs. What does a virtual navigation look like? So a brief introduction of who will be presenting to you today. Uh, my name is Katie Ann Jones. I am the career counselor from the community college campus and a proud uh, alum from Firebird Nation, class of 2014. Uh, my team member is a coordinator of employment outreach, Mr. Jonathan Maus. And there's a copy of our brochure. So our vision here at the Office of Career Services is that every student will achieve their highest level of human potential for career success. And for and our mission are linked together because our mission is to help uh, assist undergraduate, graduate, and alumni uh, to achieving their career goals. And the way we do that is through career readiness, uh, career preparation, and uh, expose them to career opportunities through partnerships with faculty, staff, even alumni, um, and different employers. So our agenda for today, we'll give you a brief description this introduction of what exactly is a virtual career fair, the benefits of the fair, the how-to component, which is the registration and sign-up process, uh, some steps to success, and then we'll close with some important reminders just to bring it home and tie it all together for you. 
So the objectives uh, by the end of the presentation, you should be able to register for the virtual career fair. Uh, you should review employers and sign up for sessions. You should be able to update your handshake profile, know how to uh, access it in order to update it, and understand the importance of preparing for the virtual career fair. So what exactly is a virtual career fair? Uh, what's the difference? So a virtual career fair is an online event uh, typically hosted by an institution. In our case, it's uh, more illustrious UBC. And employers show up to meet uh, students and alumni. Uh, they want to hire for jobs. It can be a connection uh, type of scenario, depending on who the attendee. You may not be actively seeking right now, but it is a networking opportunity for you. Uh, because we will be facilitating our virtual fair this Thursday, by the way, as you can see, it's this Thursday, October 22nd, between 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, the way Handshake, which is the host facilitator, and I will go into details about how to use Handshake, you have the sessions that are associated with the fair. So in a traditional setting, when you would attend a career fair or a job or internship uh, fair, it's typically in an auditorium or a gymnasium style, and you kind of walk around tables trying to decipher between, you know, who is still uh, set up, what are some of the areas you're interested in? In a virtual setting, you have a pre-loaded list of the employers that will be in attendance, and these employers have scheduled sessions. So there are two sessions that are available. You have the group sessions, that these are 30 minute long meetings where you can watch, listen, and use the chat feature to engage. So similar to what we're doing now in a WebEx type setting. Uh, the group size for a group session varies between 5 to 15 participants. And then you can get that intimate, more direct uh, communication or contact with employers if they have one-on-one -on -one sessions. And these are more, as the name suggests, more intimate. They're 10 minutes long, um, and you have to sign up for those separately. So the big difference is not just registering for the fair and then that's it. You have to then sign up for sessions uh, with your employer of choice. So what are some of the benefits of a virtual fair? Um, outside of the fact, okay, we're job seeking, you're on that search, uh, you want to see what's out there, you want to align yourself, of course, for career success. But some of the benefits include no more long lines. Again, in that traditional setting, uh, you can run the risk of missing an employer depending on your availability. And then you arrive at that um, fair and that table is just broken down, they're gone. <laughs> you don't have to wait in long lines anymore to speak with employers because now you have the control of pre registering. You have the opportunity to make more connections. You're not viable to miss uh, any employers or not able to, you know, walk around the size of an auditorium in a timely fashion because, again, everything is virtual. You have the opportunity to plan ahead. Uh, with the function of signing up for sessions ahead of time, you can then sift through and decipher, you know, what career, what industry you want to focus on or own and on and then prepare accurately uh, by planning uh, for that particular employer. Virtual affairs also give you an opportunity to stand out, get a chance to really connect. Uh, if you are in a traditional setting, again, you're competing with so many other people, whether it is for that employer's attention, whether it is to ask a question because they're probably occupied with another group or another person, and then you have to patiently kind of wait all right, can I ask my question now? But in a virtual setting, you have the opportunity, especially with these one-on-one -on -one sessions, to sign up um, and have that intimate uh, interaction to find out more uh, about employers. This is the opportunity to ask some questions that you probably, in your research, wanted to know more in advance before you pull the trigger, so to speak, on applying for an employment opportunity that they may have available. This is also, of course, the setting to ask, you know, what are some of the opportunities they have available if they have not mentioned it before. Um, so that's some of the benefits. Now, 
Um, I'll go through a live demonstration of how to register and how to sign up for sessions. So you go to the homepage of Handshake, and it's important that with your um, signing process that you put UDC uh, join handshake.com. And the reason being, this has the direct link and connection to your university records, and that's how you can have that association with the institution. It's a single sign on, so then it will take you to your my.udc.edu login. I already have mine preloaded, so I'll go ahead and log in. And it Am I resharing your screen, Katie? Okay. I'll stop and then reshare. Thank you, Mr. Niles. So before I proceed, I'll wait for confirmation that you are seeing. Okay, I see a thumbs up. Great. So um, what I was mentioning before, when you go to sign in to Handshake, it's important that you put udc.joinhandshake.com. Uh, this allows you to activate your account uh, with your UDC uh, credential. That's where that link between the institution and Handshake will occur. And that kind of presets some of your profile settings, which I will go into detail later on in the presentation. So now you're on your home screen. And the way to access the fair, you can either access it through events on this top tab or on the home page panel where you have events. So I'll click it in there. I've already registered for the fair, so it's showing up in my schedule. But for the purpose of demonstration, you will go into, uh, you can type it in as a search. Uh, the moment you start to type jobs in internship, you see uh, the fair comes up there, or you can use some of the preset filters that are available through Handshake. You select career fair, then it comes up. Uh, you click the fair. Because we're in the final stretch, I would advise to just register right away disregard the tab of saving it because the countdown is now real. Uh, I will unregister again just for demonstration purposes, but when you go on the registration page, this is what that home page looks like. It's a blue icon with register. Once you hit it, you've been notified, you're registered. Handshake does a good uh, job with their language of what is next? So sign up for sessions because it's not that traditional setting that we're accustomed to. We register for a fair, we go in, we kind of have our notepads and we're navigating through walking around a natural setting. That's not what we do now. We have to sign up for sessions. So you hit the view employer sessions. As you can see, there are label tabs below the date and the for available sessions. As you start to build out your schedule and what you are registering for, you will then develop your schedule. Um, if you wanted a refresher on what exactly it is a virtual career fair, we have provided a write-up and a registration process in writing code here. But let's go to the available sessions. Uh, we have over 90 employers registered. They want to speak with you, meet with you, talk about the employments that they have available and align your values and your goals and your interests with their opportunities. Of course, UDC is at the top. So if you wanted to keep it all in the family, there are opportunities that are available within the institution as well. And you can see here there are group sessions um, and there are no one-on-one -on -one sessions, but that's okay because not every employer will have the combination of group and individual, like McDonald Miller facility, for example, has a combination of group and individual. As you can see, for every employer, there is a short blurb giving you a rundown or introduction of what exactly does the employer organization 
that does. Some of them even go as far as putting in their mission, their vision, what they value. And there's a variety of times. So they do try to make it as flexible for your schedule as possible. If you scroll all the way down, because again, it is a large number of employers, you have eight other, seven of the pages to go through. So I will encourage you to take the time to read through uh, some employers, sign up for sessions. Uh, I had like sign up for one, but I'll sign up for another one, just again for demonstration. So Ross, for example, Ross stores, and most of the employers, and this is a question you typically get asked, well, what if it's not in DC? They may have just listed their uh, base, but the hiring opportunities may well be within the district. If not, that is also another opportunity for you to ask questions, uh, but some of the employers I will note have different opportunities that are outside of the DMV area. But again, you won't know unless you sign up for sessions. So once you hit a session for an employer, Ross is all filled up at this point, so you will get a message notifying you they currently have no one-on-one uh, -on -one session. And again, we have to bear in mind that we are at the final leg of the fair. Um, so a lot of these sessions are filling up fast. So please uh, register for any sessions that you're interested in and available. It's also important to highlight here, once you click on the session of interest, you will see the type of employment that the uh, organization have available. Some positions may be full-time, part-time. They also give you the classifications. Uh, some employers may be only seeking a uh, master's level. They may only be seeking seniors, masters, postdoctoral, and a lot as you can see here. And then there are others that is open to a wider range. So it, pay attention to all that in the registration process. If you know you need uh, any type of work authorization clearance, that's also another area to pay attention to, but I will go into that in detail uh, a little bit later in the presentation. But that is the registration process. If you uh, have registered for a session with one employer at a specific time, and I'm trying to provide some real, real life scenarios, you signed up for Montgomery, uh, public schools. We've confirmed that at three o'clock. We receive a confirmation message that you have registered. As you're scrolling, you're going through, you're going through, you may see uh, DC public schools have another session during that time. You will be notified by handshake that you have a conflicting session, so you either need to cancel one of the sessions or um, try and sign up for a different time. If you have a time overlap that is too close, at some sometimes uh, that happens, you will also get that uh, conflicting session alert at the bottom. So just pay attention to that as well. So that is the registration process. Once you have signed up, four sessions. Again, just to go back at the top, if you wanted to see an overview of what your schedule looks like, you could click into your schedule and then you can see what your schedule is for the day of the fair or the day um, before. On the day of the fair, these gray join video bubbles will become blue, similar to how that registration tab is. Uh, you can join sessions right up until the starting point. Now it's imperative that you be on time <laughs> uh, because the sessions will proceed as scheduled. The schedule will start at one, they will start at one. So you can sign up and register for sessions up, even on the date of the fair, but we recommend that you do it in advance because as you can see, the sessions and the Time slots available are really going through. So that is the registration and sign up process. I'm going to reshare my screen to go back to the presentation.
So after you have registered, you signed up for some sessions, what now? Now we're going into our steps of success. And that first step is update your profile <laughs> because this gives the employers an opportunity to get to know you. And similar to how you have the opportunity and that uh, availability to review employers, they can do the same for you because they are alerted of participants that have registered for their session. So we're going to go back on the demonstration wheel and I will do a live demonstration of how to access your profile and just provide some uh, walkthrough of some key areas you do not want to leave blank. And WebEx does not allow me to bounce from screen to screen, so I'm going to unshare and reshare. And we're back. So we're back at Handshake. If you register today, and I hope you do everything the same day, but I understand that that's a lot of employers to go through. You took a break, you log back in, we're back at the home page. How do I um, update my profile? Similar to uh, really any social media platform, you will hit your image so that little icon and if you don't have an image it will just be a gray bubble at the top right and then you select my profile after you've selected your profile uh, i always direct students and alum to the left panel because handshake gives you a completion meter to show you your progress of your profile completion. I would encourage you to get this bar all the way to 100, um, but if you do not have the time to get it to 100, you really would want you to, to. Here are some key areas you absolutely need to have information in. A picture, first impression. This is the first connection that can be made to a name. So a professional headshot. So no selfies, no family photos, and there's another person head peeking out beside yours. No, it's a clean headshot. Find a white background, go against the wall, and get a, a picture. You can put a small blurb of a journey, um, which this mimics somewhat to like a LinkedIn summary. If you want to highlight skills or interests or maybe an industry interest area, uh, this would be the place to do it. Uh, as you can see, my example, I just kind of tapped into some uh, skills that I possess and what I currently do, and just some um, personality tips of, you know, I'm organized and proactive. You do have the option because you would have activated your account using your UDC.edu email, there are some information that are preloaded for you uh, from your banner account. So, of course, the connection of UDC would be visible and you would agree that you have obtained, but you do have the option to make some of this information not visible. And I will uh, show you how to make that visible or take that function off if you so desire. It's important that you take the time to include and update your education history because as you can see, some of those uh, positions or some of those employers have clearly stated and outlined some of their employer like uh, presets or uh, recommendations that they are looking for requirements rather. So it's important that you put all your education um, on your profile. Another key area you do not want to leave blank is your work and volunteer experience. So I know this becomes very tedious because it's like I already have a resume. I don't want to rewrite everything again. Uh, I understand, but again, this is your digital or virtual resume, if you will. So a lot of times employer will just come on uh, your profile and just scan through, okay, let me see what, what their experiences are. Um, and this gives them an opportunity again to get to know you. If you have any interests, you can uh, put that on there. If you want to make things not visible, there's this little pencil you can see here, you can click that. You can make the updates to it. And then uh, if you're not looking for a job, which 
for the purpose of demonstration and this presentation, you can state, you know, what you are looking for. Um, and that's totally up to you. You don't have to. Uh, you can put if you have a specific area that you would prefer to work in, if you have a specific role or industry. So you really can get very personal. You can personalize this uh, to its highest degree, or you can keep it bare bones. But there are just some things that cannot stay blank, education being one of them. Uh, your name, which is already preloaded for you, uh, a picture, a journey. Then we get down to your personal information. You know, UDC.edu is automatically listed for you. And I know we're presenting to alumni. So if you know you no longer have access to your UDC.edu, now is the time to contact uh, the IT department to get your uh, email reactivated or activated or figure out what your access uh, issues may be because it's imperative that you access your handshake using your UDC.edu account. Skills area. It's not like your physical resume. You can just uh, type in and then include the skills. Then we get to the core area, which is your documents. You want to put your resume up. You want to put uh, some form of professional document or employers, the resume being the primary document. So you can upload your documents here, or I'll show you another way shortly. And then there are some other things you can include if you have uh, some core courses that are relating to a particular industry, say in financing or business, and you want to highlight some courses that you know will be beneficial to outline, then please put it. If you are a part of any projects, uh, volunteer work, this is the place to put it. So documents, you can upload your documents here by hitting manage documents. And as you can see, I have my resume visible. If you have uploaded a document, this alerts your assigned career counselor that a document has been uploaded and it may be pending if that document has not been reviewed and approved. My document has been re reviewed and approved, so it will be highlighted as reviewed in green. Uh, say you have multiple resumes because you want to personalize and tailor it for specific employers. That can be done as well, but I will recommend setting an appointment with your assigned career counselor to walk you through uh, what exactly you would want to make visible and not make visible, or even walk you through the whole process of reconstructing uh, industry-specific resume. So that is making documents visible, not visible. They're labeled here for you. If you wanted to put a cover letter, uh, you just hit upload. You select uh, from your computer, and then you put the type. Please make sure that you're paying attention to what you're labeling documents um, as. So if it's a resume, make sure it's labeled as resume because if you label it, label it as cover letter, it will be saved under cover letter and the employers will not see your resume if it's wrong labeled. Another way to access your documents is going back to that top right image and then hitting documents. And it takes you right here to that home page um, where you can upload your documents. And as I wrap up the profile update portion of the presentation, I will go into uh, settings and privacy. So if you wanted to update a preferred name that you go by, uh, Banner misspelled your name for some reason. You are uh, now going by a new surname. You have been married. You know you can go in and make those changes. Uh, you can add a contact number if needs be. But the area of key importance that I want to point out to you today is your privacy setting. You want to make sure your privacy setting is selected to community. Even Handshake agrees. They have it here in purple recommended. Why we recommend setting your privacy settings to community is this makes your profile visible, not just to employers, but students and alum across all Handshake platforms. 
So that's that networking component. And this is a pro tip even outside of navigating the fair because opportunities can be presented to you based on association of, you know, an alum that's working within the organization, make the connection. And this allows employers to see all that you have done. So if you have took the time to update your resume, you've been um, up to date with making your appointments with your uh, assigned career counselor, you have updated documents visible. If you make it private, all that work serves no one because you're the only one that can see it when you log into your handshake. If you select it only to employers, which is another preferred privacy setting, uh, this will only make it visible to employers and you may receive messages about potential job opportunities. Uh, but it's best to just keep it in community because another thing, if you just set it to employers, Handshake has algorithms that will only present uh, employers that are associated to maybe just your major, and you're probably in a state now where you're in the process of changing a career, so you don't want to miss any opportunity by any means. So it's always recommended to keep your privacy setting in community. And then for another important area is the work authorization. If you know you need some form of authorization to work or you're currently on documentation permitting you to work, then you want to make that uh, clear uh, to employers. And if you prefer not to answer, please note that Handshake will then automatically assume that you are. So then you will get recommended uh, employment opportunities that may not align with your work authorization clearance. And if you uh, have more questions on that, then I will put in the chat at the end of the presentation the contact, uh, the point of contact for getting more information about that. So then you make sure you save all your updates, of course. And then you will get, you know, the notification that you successfully saved your uh, profile updates and your privacy settings. So that is the walkthrough of updating your and we will go back to our presentation. And if you have any questions, we will um, address them at the end. We do have the QA portion that's in the presentation. I know this is a lot visually, all that clicking around. Um, and then just to add on to some more steps for success, make sure we cannot emphasize enough register early um, and sign up for sessions. And in today's case, register today. <laughs> register today, Tuesday, the fair is on Thursday. Um, so register and sign up for sessions. Again, these employers, they want uh, to meet with you and they have opportunities available. There's not a group session, but it's a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, so please sign up for the sessions. Now we're getting a little bit more technical. We're veering off from you know, the handshake modules of things, but find a quiet place to avoid distractions. And distractions span more than just sound. Distractions can be visual distractions. Find an area that doesn't have a lot of foot traffic. You don't want people walking in and out of your train or even behind you because then that becomes very distracting. Um, you want to also check in advance uh, your connection Make sure your Wi-Fi is strong. Uh, you know your camera is working, your microphone, your headphones. Uh, so that is a key, 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 key step uh, for success. You know because it also ties into that presentation element, that first impression. You don't want to be talking to other people in the midst of the employer giving their group presentation, let alone in your one-on-one -on -one session because you only have ten minutes. Uh, make a great first impression. Show up on time and dress appropriately. I know it's very easy uh, in today's society. We're in a pandemic and we're at home and we're behind screens and we get complacent. But still dress as if you were in a traditional physical setting and you were about to go and you were invited for an interview, uh, so to speak. So dress uh, professional and 
they're sitting down, you only want to dress from the waist up, that is okay. But be mindful that you are only dressed from the waist up. So be careful if you have to move or get up or step away that the other persons on the screen are not seeing, you know, if you have your pajama pants on, um, which are cartoon characters like that, does not need to be visible. Then do your research. This is one of the key steps for success in any setting, virtual or traditional. Uh, you already have those preset values um, and goals that you have set, but now you have to take the initiative to go the extra mile of doing your research, learning more about employers you want to meet and ask questions. Because as you can see with that res registration and sign up, uh, module how handshake has it you do have the opportunity to get that uh, blurb on what these employers are about and then you can determine how they align with your values and your goals and your morals uh, but take that step take that extra step of going on their handshake profile finding out you know who has worked there is there anybody that's currently employed by them that's an alum or have some connections to something that you have on your um, and I will pass the baton over to um, Mr. Niles, who will go in further details of translating those research skills into results for success for you. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, fantastic overview of the registration and um, can't emphasize enough how critical it is to fill out your handshake profile. It can be such a, a useful way to start off on the right foot. Um, with an employer. And I think another way to make or break a career fair, um, a lot of students have success when they put in that extra effort, that extra time to do just a little bit of research. Um, you know, I think this can contribute to a positive first impression so, um, so greatly and is so vital to the success of your attendance to this virtual fair. Um, that's really how you can make the most out of the career fair and why I think research is important important to um, having a successful fair. When I talk to employers as the coordinator of employment outreach, this is something that they want to see. They want to see that you know our organization. They want to see that you can um, highlight why you're interested specifically in our organization. So um, for this next portion of the presentation, I wanted to just give some examples of how to do it. It may seem obvious, but um, there's some really finite, tiny ways you can sprinkle in facts that um, address um, what you know about the employer already. And what you're doing there is you're insinuating these skills of preparation, organization, initiative to go and find out more about the employer you're talking to and make that employer impression um, really start off on the, on the right foot. So let's look at some actual employers that are going to be at this career fair. First, I um, just chose one named Wolf Trap Foundation. Um, they're an organization for the performing arts here in the DMV area out in Virginia. It's a nonprofit organization. They have one-on-one -on -one sessions. They have group sessions. So if you schedule a 10-minute one-on-one session, here's some ways that maybe you could research um, and, and tie that research into an elevator pitch or that first 30 second blurb of telling the employer who you are, a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in their organization. So as I was researching through the Wolf Trapped Foundation, you know, a great place to start, the about section, right? You get to learn who they are, what they are about. And um, that's really the first place that I recommend to go. But hey, let your motivations um, lead you here. So if, if there is something that you're interested in this organization, such as the National Park Service, for whatever reason, if that were to connect to your personal career values, maybe you incorporate a statement like this into your elevator pitch. After researching Wolf Trap Foundation, I've learned that your partnership with the National Park Service distinctly connects to my personal career values. And working a statement like that into your elevator pitch can be really powerful, shows that you've prepared. Here's another example um, that I came up with for the Wolf Trap Foundation, sprinkling in some of those facts. I was reading that they do over 100 performances um, every summer. You know, being a part of an organization that oversees the production for over 100 performances each summer connects to my professional goals. A simple way of sprinkling in a fact, but 
in that you're highlighting that you did research. Here's another one. I'll show you the third one I came up with for the wolf trap. Um, highlighting that you did research. Through my research, I was impressed to see that Wolf Trap Foundation reaches over 78,000 families through arts education initiatives, meager to discuss opportunities with an organization that has such a dedication to arts education. So this is just another example of how you can sprinkle in a little factoid about the company into your elevator pitch to insinuate you've done some preparation. I think it doesn't always have to be those implicit insinuations. Say through my research. Go ahead and explicitly tell the employer that I've researched your company and I feel confident in speaking to you today because I'm prepared and I know that this is an opportunity I'm truly interested in. Um, let's look at another organization as an example. So we've got Van Meter Companies, a local real estate agency in the DMV area that's as well at the career fair. Um, looking at the first example here, I was searching through the Van Meter companies and I found out that they've been around since 1955. Um, and through a commitment to quality, they've become one of the most widely recognized companies in real estate. Again, after researching Van Meter companies, feel free to throw that in to your elevator pitch. Let them know that you've done some preparation. They'll want to hear that. They'll want to see it. So it's a great way to insinuate that you have skills of organization and preparation. You're going to take the initiative. Another example from this same company as I was researching them and just trying to pick out some facts that called to me. Um, you know, I came across their customer care ambassadors program. So maybe that connects with you in some customer service experience that you have. So I understand um, that you truly partner with the home buyer through this customer care ambassadors. My experiences in customer support, I've developed strong abilities in customer outreach, care, service that I believe could be an asset to your company. You know, I'm taking some of the language that I see interspersed in the programs and the mission and the vision of these companies, and I'm sprinkling it in to my elevator pitch as I'm intentionally crafting it based on my research. Final example for Van Meters, like I said earlier, let your motivations lead you. If something specifically connects to you about a specific company, reference that. You know, I thought it was kind of cool that they've been recognized by the Washington Business Journal for uh, the Corporate Philanthropy Award for three years and running. Um, so through my research, I was impressed to see that Van Meter Companies has been continuously recognized for giving back by winning the Washington Business Journal's Corporate Philanthropy Award multiple years in a row. I'm eager to discuss the opportunity of joining a like-minded company that is focused on giving back to the community. You're just making a connection between you and the company, um, and you're making it pretty explicit so that the company can see why you would be a benefit, an asset to the company. Um, now, these are just examples. Whether or not you talk to Van Meter or Wolf Trap Fan Foundation at the um, career fair, feel free to borrow those examples if you do. But make a Word document, make a notepad since this is a virtual fair, copy some facts of that organization into that so you can reference them while you're having conversations if they're relevant. Um, but it can be a really critical way to make or break the career fair um, as far as your participation in it. If you do just a little bit of research before going into a conversation with an employer, um, we want you to have successful conversations with the employer and, and market yourself as high as possible um, because that's what you deserve. So let us know how we can help you with that. Um, and I think Kadian's going to wrap it up with some final reminders of how you can knock the career fair out of the park. Thank you, Mr. Niles, and very great, great points to be made. So guys, you heard it here. Not one time, not two times, not three times, but the importance of doing your research and just going that extra mile and taking that step. Don't be reliant on just your managed documents. Oh, well, I've already put up a cover letter, I already put up a resume. You know, these employers are meeting a number of uh, candidates day in, day out. So don't just rely on your documents, but ask those questions. Uh, here's an opportunity again for you to have those one on one sessions. Uh, you have the capability of even sending messages through Handshake. If you don't want to speak, you can do it through the chat. So, here are just some wrap up reminders for you. You can take a screenshot of this as your checklist again as we're in that home stretch. 
all roads lead to uh, the Jobs and Internship Fair this Thursday. Have I registered? Make sure you register for the fair. Registration doesn't just end there. Have I signed up for any sessions? You know, there are 97, and you can chime in here, Mr. Nas, but I believe that was the last number, 97. So over 90 employers with multiple sessions for you to sign up for. So we understand there are other day-to-day -day responsibilities um, and obligations that are happening, but if one time slot doesn't work, then go and review to see what is available uh, that meets your interests and values. Uh, sign up for those sessions. Update your profile. Um, that's important because, again, this is your first impression. This is similar to how you're doing your preparation and research. Employers may take that extra step and look into, well, oh, let me see who signed up for this session. And if nothing is there, then there is no true way of learning you or getting to know you um, in advance. And then if you sign up for the sessions and you don't ask any questions, then it's going to be at a disservice to you. So please update your profile if you need assistance in updating your profile. Uh, schedule and request an appointment with your assigned uh, career counselor. Get your documents reviewed and approved. So perfect segue into that next reminder. Need help with uh, registering, signing up, or updating your profile? Here is that reminder that you absolutely need your assigned uh, career counselor's input, and this is to review and approve your documents. You might have had, you know, uh, employment gap, and you are kind of worried or unsure. How do I update my document? Do I even have enough to put on a resume? These questions are what we are here to help you with and, you know, help you reconstruct and formulate a professional document to present, not just for the fair, but just for your uh, career pursuits moving forward. Research your employers. Uh, Mr. Nance provided great examples, of, you know, not just researching and, and there, but incorporating uh, how to develop an elevation pitch because even if you don't have any questions, you're letting these employers know, this is what I bring to the table and this is why I wanna work for you. So research your employers, prepare a few talking points and that's where that elevation pitch comes in. Even if it's not an elevation pitch, you may discover some new things uh, that you didn't know and you want to know more about or, or you, know, you have uh, that opportunity to Inquire about some future plans that an organization or an employer may have outlined on their website. View and apply for open jobs. So it doesn't just end at registering for the fair, signing up for sessions, getting that wealth of information and not doing anything. You've done all the preparation work and now it's the execution phase. Are any of these employers, whether they make mention of opportunities or not, have you recently seen any opportunities available uh, from them, whether it's from Handshake, Indeed, or any other job, job platforms? But if before the fair, after the fair, they made mention of opportunities available on Handshake, you can save them um, and you'll be notified later on it. So if they have a deadline date that's coming up, Handshake really does a good job of uh, updating you. Uh, so save the jobs or apply for them uh, because that application process is even more seamless when you have done step four, which is getting your documents reviewed. Um, and it's important to plug in here that one of the appointment types that we do have available within the Office of Career Services is that mock interview um, appointment. So you might have had that one-on-one -on -one session and you may be asked or invited for an interview, a follow-up interview. We can help you with that as well. It doesn't hurt to have a second pair of ears. We can help you formulate some of your responses, you know, get that, get some of the nerves out. So uh, just know that we are here to help. We are very passionate about what we do. We are here to help you achieve your career goals and be successful. Because again, firebirds, as firebirds, we always rise. So. Those are just your important reminders. And now we're at our Q&A section. I think I saw some questions in the chat. So let's 
Palmer. Yeah, I'm seeing questions in the chat as well. Um, and it has to relate to access to Handshake. So I did put my email address in the chat. I'll share my full contact information because I do understand that for um, some alum, I may need to be in contact with IT directly to ensure that you get access. So email me, uh, let's get a conversation started as soon as possible so that we can make this happen. I really appreciate this conversation, especially on, um, you know, dressing for success, even in, in a virtual environment. That was extremely important because it doesn't cross your mind um, that from the waist up, you may be suited down, hair and makeup, really yes. putting your, your, your best face forward, but all it takes is for you to like lean over, stand up to get something, and you're like, oh, what just happened there? Um, and I'm guilty of that myself, but I'm never on like extremely important virtual meetings <laughs> these days where um, that's like, you know, on my mind all the time, but that's something that I hope everyone thinks about. Even in a virtual environment, you have to think about that presentation, doing that research, because in my past experience, I've had employers ask me questions about um, a specific campaign. And I'll give you a good example, like Amazon, they have this entire campaign of being net zero by a certain time. And in conversations with Amazon, they bring that up. Uh, we shared with you last week in the uh, building a LinkedIn profile, how many employers are looking for you to have your, your LinkedIn profile serve as your application. When you go to their websites and apply, they sometimes ask you for your LinkedIn profile. And a lot of that, it shows them just really who you are. So in, in these virtual conversations, it is incredible to me, um, the material, the questions, the knowledge that employers are looking for. And I'm gonna ask my colleagues in um, career services, I'm not really sure, like, is it that they not so much wanna know if I'm the right fit, that part I understand, but it's more of like a deep dive into who I am before they bring me on board. I mean, do you find it to be the experience of some of these employers and really trying to get to know a lot about you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And again, I know it's imperative not to be solely reliant on your professional documents and take it from a career counselor. Yes, we emphasize the importance of keeping these documents up to date, but you're finding more and more that, that personality component is a very key role in am I going to get invited or am I going to move forward by the next stage of the hiring process? Uh, employers want to find out which would be a good fit with the team. You know, collaborative efforts are very key right now, especially when there is this uh, heavy dependency on what is your discipline level because you're not in physical control. So what is it that you can tell me about yourself that I did not see on your resume, that you didn't have enough time to speak on in your cover letter? So they're asking you questions, what do you like to do in your spare time? And those are typically icebreaker questions as you label them, but now those questions are resonating into that hiring decision, that decision making process. Um, and just to touch a little bit more on the waste up component, um, I did a whole presentation on that, especially for uh, the aesthetical presence. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your makeup, ladies. <laughs> you want to keep your makeup to at a professional tone. So say the ruby red, and I know it's fall, I'm going to do dark lips. Let's try and stay away from that. Uh, gentlemen, it goes without saying, you know, no white tees, you're still expected to be in your button down. Just to give some concrete examples, scenarios of chewing gum, I understand that may help with nerves, but professionally, even when you're in a virtual setting, you may seem or may uh, be, oh, well, I'm not 
in a face to face type of setting. So this is uh, it's very distracting. <laughs> it's very distracting. So you want to be mindful of that. Um, I know I talk a lot with my hands. So uh, pro tip that I do, I always frame myself mm -hmm. to keep my hands out of the plant. So they're not seeing all of this when I'm talking. Because right. I know I talk with my hands. I definitely know I do. Yeah. Like, Have you seen my hands? I'm talking with my hands. Have you seen? Are you seeing my hands? Because I'm moving. No, no. Okay, great. Okay, that's good. So, um, and then another thing, a lot of these uh, virtual settings for your videos, you have the ability of creating a background. So this mom has a great example here. Yes. With her. Student so, center. Exactly. <laughs> so if you have things that are fixated on the wall, you can't move them. And it's that one spot that you get good Wi Fi. <laughs> This is why you need to come in early so you can right. set your background setting. Um, you know, you blur it out like I'm very upset with something. But I just wanted to reiterate it. Uh, instead of that point, it's too for success. It may seem very meaningful, mm -hmm. but for some of these employment opportunities, you have to be mindful that they are in a virtual uh, capacity. So when you are hired, this may be your day to day. And if you can <laughs> be professional uh, in this setting, then that could go against you when you are as part of the hiring decisions. That's good advice. Thank you for that. I really appreciate this conversation. It's been awesome. Um, I need to share my screen. So let me figure this out. Change roles so I can be the presenter. Thank you very much um, for this awesome collaboration. I cannot tell you how much it has been to me to partner with my colleagues in Office of Career Services. Um, just by way of background, after the May graduation, I began to reach out to alumni when I came on board June 1. So sometime in July, August, I had many of my, my you know, newly minted fibers contact me and they're like, I'm having a difficult time finding a job. I don't think I can find a job in COVID. And I thought, I don't think so. Like you are equipped with more than enough to get a job in this environment and any environment. We need to work on that presentation. So that is what sparked this four part career readiness webinar series. And it has been an absolute pleasure to work with my colleagues in uh, career services to learn so much, gain so many tools. And I've said this before, like, you know, if I ever find myself looking for a job, I know how to build a resume and utilize this brief summary as a marketing document that communicates my brand. I have everything I need to build a LinkedIn profile to amplify my brand, connect with professionals, professional associations. I can use LinkedIn to stand out as a thought leader. I can share my writings. And I said last week, as you're starting out on this journey, please don't think less of yourself. You have so much in you. And in this series, we really just try to pull it out. Now, I want to ask one final question, because as I'm talking, I'm thinking about it. Like if I'm new in the marketplace, I'm just starting out. I may have some volunteer service. And we talked about how volunteer service, it is valuable when you're starting out to say on your resume, your LinkedIn profile to demonstrate that I've brought my time and my talents, my skills, my resources to a volunteer opportunity where I am not getting paid. You can put that, you know, that you can speak to that in these career fairs when you're in these group sessions and you're you're in these one-on-one. So don't downplay that, not one bit. But how do I stand out if I'm just starting out when I'm in these one-on-one -on -one sessions? What, do you have any advice for we have a lot of folks who are new to the marketplace. What what should they do? So great, great question. And I love the fact that you uh, highlighted, you know, voluntary work 
the importance of community service. We talked about that in our resume presentation because this falls into that category of how to uh, portray experience when I don't concretely have work experience within the industry that I'm interested in. And this is where those transferable skills uh, come comes in. And that's how we will help you develop those uh, talking points or elevation pitches. So it's not, and that's why we emphasize, I know it seems very redundant for us to say, oh, schedule an appointment with your assigned career counselor. But this is what we're trained to do. You know, we specialize in helping you formulating those uh, sentences, uh, t attacking um, those transferable skills and making them marketable. We talked about branding last week, which I was in attendance of that session, and this was very well uh, presented because as a human being, it's not just recent graduates. You could be um, a doctoral uh, degree seeking uh, professional. It's hard for us to talk about ourselves. It's hard for us to highlight things that are really um, great, but we find them real. So when you have these sessions with us, we're like, oh, no, no, no. Don't downplay that. This is how you're going to transfer uh, that volunteer work into this is that same level of strong work ethic that I will bring uh, to your organization. And then that shows, okay, here's a person that's not only eager, they have enthusiasm, they have willingness to learn. That's something that's very important. And if there, if there are areas that you are um, definitely missing, the requirements are the components, that honesty and transparency piece too plays an important role. So I know a lot of times people defer from applying for positions because uh, they've recently graduated and they don't have the number of years of experience that is being asked. You, there is such a thing as you know academic experience, so you may not have the workforce experience, but you have that real time in the classroom uh, experience that now you're going to display that willingness to learn and they, employers really do appreciate that honesty. They really do appreciate that transparency. You know, this is not an area that I'm um, well equipped with or more informed with or I'm in practice of, but I am willing to learn. I'm open to uh, come into the organization and do uh, whatever it is the best of my ability to grow in this area. Is there anyone that exemplifies this well that currently works within the organization? And you see that already displays the employer. Oh, okay. I like this um, candidate. Let me um, know more. So very great question, but that's, that's some of the um, talking tips and best practices that we go through uh, with our clients in our sessions. Let me, and it's that we're right at 105 and I, I don't want to, um, take us too far over our time. But one final question that I have is um, the importance of professional references. I have a lot of young cousins in my family and they're always like, but can I just use you as a reference? I'm like, but I'm your cousin. I don't understand how I would help in that regard. Um, so can you talk to us about where should we start looking for references? It, 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 I think you can use some family members, but it can't just be all family members who consist of your, your references. So I will speak on this and then I will pass the baton over to our employment outreach coordinator uh, because you raise, you ask the question and then you also give me a little answer in the, in the midst of the, the question, but yes, absolutely not. You don't want to keep your reference uh, solely geared towards family members, close friends, um, distant aunts and uncles, you know, because that does not provide a holistic uh, outlook of what your uh, capabilities are. It's good to put some uh, work history uh, in there. So it may not be, say you have a boss that's no longer the boss or supervisor. Uh, you need to find out what their contact information is. Please notify your references in advance. This is another thing. Um, notify your references in, in advance that you're applying for positions and is it okay for them to be uh, contacted. You have instances, again, that there are uh, change of guards 
So a coworker could also stand in the gap as a reference as well, because they can speak to what type of worker you are. If you only keep your reference list uh, to families and friends, then that does not paint a well-rounded picture of who you are as an employee. And then Mr. Niles, is there anything you wanted to add from the employer um, viewpoint? Yeah, I mean, I think you covered a lot about just references in general. Typically, you wouldn't ask your family or friends to serve as a reference um, unless there's some sort of extenuating circumstance. Um, so think about faculty members, employment supervisors, advisors. Um, I know that was my first reference when I was an undergrad. Colleagues who you've worked with, um, coach or volunteer leaders can be another option. These are people that you would ideally keep up with in your professional life um you know sending an email every so often to them just to give them an update on where you are at in your career can be helpful in keeping up with your references so that you're not always reaching out to them asking for a reference every time um if you sense there's a hesitation from your reference when you ask out um if they would be offered they would be willing to offer a reference that could be um, them, you know, subtly encouraging you to look elsewhere. You want to make sure that they're going to really put their all into it and give you a good, um, a good reference. Yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty much um, my overview of references. Um, that's if you have any questions? Yeah, uh, that's really great. And um, please check your chat. I did put the registration link to the jobs and internships virtual fair in the chat. Also the link to the 90 plus employer partners that are gonna be participating in this virtual fair. Now I need you to understand that even if you feel I'm just starting out, or maybe you've been out there for a minute and you're not really sure how to present yourself, give it some, I want you to give that some deep thought because I want you to identify your assets, your value points. Number one, you are a graduate of the prestigious University of the District of Columbia, and you are more than equipped to land that job or the internship, make that connection. So don't sell yourself short. You got this. But please take the awesome advice of my colleagues in Office of Career Services and begin to research some of these organizations. Look at the initiatives that they have going on in this climate, in these unprecedented times when we're faced with so much inequity and social justice. There are companies who are looking to show that they are inclusive and diverse. Please don't take it lightly, don't take it for granted that these companies are specifically looking at HBCUs. So I want you to be prepared for the conversations, okay? Again, the registration link, it is in. Ms. Jones, did you have something to say? Yes, I did see a question from a current graduate student in the MBA program. Uh, we do uh, provide services to graduate and professional studies students. So I did include in the chat as well, uh, the contact information for the assigned career counselors based on the school and our direct office line to speak with our office manager. Thank you for that. And I, I saw the all the questions as well. I'm able to um, save the chat. So I'll go through the chat, go through the questions and follow up with everyone um, once we're done with this presentation. I want to remind everyone that we will be convening a virtual homecoming. It'll take place November 8 to 13. We're celebrating the golden anniversary of the class of 1970. It's their 50th anniversary, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to kick off our homecoming with a volunteer service. Um, we're going to be volunteering at Martha's Table on Veterans Day. And so that information will be hitting your inbox um, really soon. We have 50 slots to fill at Martha's Table. And I'm really excited about this collaboration because UDC's College of Agriculture, Urban Sustainability and Environmental Sciences causes for sure. UDC's Firebird Farm has been producing fresh produce for nonprofit organizations throughout the city. Martha's Table has been one of those recipients. 
I'm not sure what the numbers are as of today, but at the end of August, from March to August, the awesome team at Firebird Farm, they had delivered over 8,000 pounds of fresh produce. And so we're gonna go on Veterans Day and help them bag groceries. I need help bagging 750 bags of groceries for distribution at their Columbia Heights location and also distribution for their Ward 8 Congress Heights location. Also need help unloading the food trucks. The trucks come in at eight o'clock in the morning and we'll be um, placing the dry goods onto the shelves. And again, bagging these 750 bags of groceries. It's a lot of work, but it's fulfilling. And even though it's a holiday, many of you are off. I know that classes are, we don't have classes that day. I'm asking Firebirds to please serve, to please come out to Martha's table. Again, you'll get that link really soon and help us. We'll, we'll also be doing food distribution in Ward 8. Uh, and I'm really gonna need your help. Also, this is our season of giving. And I'm asking please, Firebirds, please help and support the UDC Foundation. One easy way to help UDC is with Amazon Smile. I don't know about where you live, but in my wonderful Ward 8 neighborhood, that Amazon truck is pulling up two or three times a day just on my street. And I'm like, man, I hope my neighbors, I, I've got to tell my neighbors, support UDC. So if you please change your bookmark from Amazon.com, change it to Smile dot amazon.com and do your shopping on the smile amazon landing page it looks just like the regular amazon page every time you shop 0.05 percent of eligible purchases that's donated to udc foundation it doesn't cost you a dime there are no extra fees that's amazon's uh, philanthropic arm and how they give back to these charities that you designate. So again, smile.amazon.com, please designate University of DC Foundation for your friends, your families who are in the federal workforce. We are now in our combined federal campaign. UDC Foundation's CFC number on the screen, 13321. It's an awesome way through payroll deduction that you can support UDC Foundation. I cannot tell you the impact that a $10, a $20, $25 gift, like per month, per paycheck, that means a great deal. You can also do just one lump sum if you like. Whatever you can give, that would really be appreciated. And for DC government employees, all of us, really grateful and thankful DC government employees who are still working. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. I'm gonna give her a shout out on this webinar. I'm asking you to please support UDC Foundation for payroll deductions through the DC One Fund. So that's DC government's philanthropic efforts for DC government, DC government employees to support their favorite nonprofits. And we have a lot of local institutions that are doing some phenomenal work. I, I mentioned Martha's Table, but we have food banks, we have organizations in DC that are helping veterans, getting them off the streets, getting them into homes, helping our seniors. We have so many seniors who are shut in this time, who are not coming out of their homes because of COVID. And so we need to support these organizations to get them assistance. But then there's UDC Foundation. We're helping our students in so many different ways during this unprecedented time. We have a student emergency fund that is assisting students with food, rent, phone bill, electric bills. Normally, the, the appeals that come to us is for books, is for tuition, online access, but the, the appeals have broadened. So I'm asking everyone, please do what you can. The minimum donation for DC One Fund is $26. So that's a one time, if that's every page, pay period, whatever you can do, I'm telling you, if all of us come together, we can strike a mighty blow. Thank you everyone for your participation in today's webinar. I am really grateful 
to the Office of Career Services for their collaboration. Again, these webinars will be available on UDC's website. If I have your email, you will get notification when that page goes live. Is there any closing words for my colleagues in career services before we end this uh, final webinar? Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. No. And again, the partners are here to assist. Handshake does have a mobile application. So if you do uh, find yourself experiencing technological issues and connectivity issues on there, there and download Handshake through the Apple Store or Google Play. So no excuses. Register and sign up for sessions. Right. Absolutely. And thank you, Ms. Connor. This has been a great one to see. Absolutely has. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. We hope to see you October 22nd for the Jobs and Internship Virtual Fair and for Homecoming. Until then, you guys take care. Continue to wear your mask. Continue to sanitize your hands. And please vote.